Hello everyone and welcome into today's video. I am so excited to be bringing you my review of season three of The Clone Wars, as well as an episode ranking of all of the episodes in the season three arcs. Thank you so much for being here. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is KL and my channel is dedicated to watching movies for the first time and letting you know what I thought of them. Star Wars were the very first movies that I reacted to on my channel and everyone was yelling at me to watch Clone Wars. So I started watching that exclusively over on my Patreon, which is where you will find the full length watch along reactions and full reviews to all of the episodes still ongoing as of right now. But the reason that I'm making these brief review and recap and ranking videos is for those of you that are unable to support on Patreon. I understand that finances are tough for a lot of us and you might not have the disposable income to be able to support anyone on YouTube and that's totally okay. So these videos will give you like my bite size review of the seasons of the episodes and allow you to still be able to talk with me in the comments and let me know what you think of these shows and seasons and we can have a really good discussion about it. For those of you that are interested in signing up to Patreon, I do have a try before you buy. You can actually watch the Mandalore trilogy right now for free. The link will be in the corner, in the pinned comment and in the description. Feel free to go grab your own copy of those episodes through Disney Plus, sync them up along with me and then you will kind of get an understanding of how it works before you commit to signing up. Also too, whether you sign up on Patreon just to get access to one or two arcs, or if you're in it for the long haul to watch the whole show along with me, no matter what, I really appreciate it. Signing up on Patreon helps me immensely. It allows me to continue to do this at the capacity that I am. And the more that my Patreon grows and the more that my YouTube channel grows, the more likely it becomes that I can actually make this work full time, which is my top priority right now. And then my second priority after that is to get a video editor because, oh my gosh, I would love to be able to put out like three videos a week consistently for you all. And unfortunately, I just cannot do that by myself. So I just want to extend a massive thank you. First, thank you to all of my existing patrons who have been on this journey with me since the very first Clone Wars episode. You are amazing and I thank you so, so, so much. Thank you to all the patrons who joined halfway through, joined recently, joined just for one month. I appreciate you all as well. Thank you to anyone who might sign up after seeing this video. I appreciate you so much. And thank you to all the other patrons that might not even care about these exclusive reactions, but are still supporting me anyway at some of the lower tiers. I also appreciate you immensely. And lastly, thank you to you for watching this video today. Make sure to give it a like, leave a comment. All the engagement helps so much and I just really appreciate you being here. With this massive introduction out of the way, let's dive in to my thoughts on season three. All right, so season three of The Clone Wars kicks off with a duology called Corruption on Mandalore. And this duology arc features the episodes called Corruption and the Academy. In Corruption, we see Padme and Duchess Satine team up to investigate hazardous chemicals within a bottled tea that is supposed to be delivered to schools. I'll admit that this episode was not super exciting for me, but what I do appreciate is how Clone Wars can take a situation like this and make it interesting. Easily the best part about this episode was just the fact that we got Padme and Satine together as this like epic dynamic duo of ladies. It was really lovely watching them work together to uncover this corruption. And it's just interesting seeing like the ladies of Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi working together. And I really love that. This episode for me, is a solid C on the ranking list. To wrap up this duology, in the Academy, we see Ahsoka Tano assigned to teach at a leadership academy on Mandalore. However, soon after she arrives, Satine's nephew Corky and his fellow classmates discover that Prime Minister Almec is part of a black market conspiracy, and they all work together to expose the corruption. Once again, this episode didn't really land with me, but I still appreciate the writers taking something like this and making it interesting and just adding something new to the whole Clone Wars show experience. It's nice to have have some focus on more smaller disturbances within the Star Wars universe, especially during the time of the Clone Wars. And it's nice to not always have the story focusing on the big baddies in Palpatine, Dooku, and Grievous, and Ventress. I also know that Mandalore is an incredibly important planet in the overall Star Wars universe, so I always enjoy when we get to spend time here. This episode for me is another C ranking because it was fine, but it was not super exciting, you know? 
The next arc in Season 3 is a single episode arc called Assassin, where Ahsoka is tasked to protect Padme during a political trip to Alderaan, but she keeps having recurring visions of Aura Sang. Aura attempts to assassinate Ahsoka, but does not succeed. So together, Padme and Ahsoka trap Aura, and they discover that the real villain intending to hurt Padme was actually Zero the Hut. This was a fun little single episode arc. Definitely nothing super special or exciting, but it was enjoyable. The one thing I found really interesting in this episode in particular was the visions that Ahsoka experienced compared to the visions that Anakin went through in the films and the way that Yoda acted with both of them. It was very different. Yoda had so much support for Ahsoka through her visions, but as we remember and recall, Yoda did not exactly have the same support for Anakin through his. Obviously, I feel like the attachment level is the key difference here, but it was just something that I found interesting while I was watching this episode. While I still enjoyed this one, I unfortunately am going to mark this one as a D on my screen scale and I hope you're okay with that. Remember that the D level here is not me saying that I disliked the episode. I just didn't like it as much as everything above it. <laughs> The next arc in Clone Wars Season 3 is Domino Squad Part 3, which is another single episode arc featuring the episode called Arc Troopers. In this episode, the Republic learns of a Separatist attack to take place on Kamino. Anakin and Obi-Wan hurry off to the planet. Ventress, Grievous, and a bunch of droids come out of the ocean to destroy Kamino's clone production facilities, and we have Rex, Cody, Fives, and Echo leading the clones in a desperate defense of their home planet. I can retrieve all the firepower that we need. I swear to God, if we lose 99 or we lose Echo or Fives, I'm gonna be very sad. <laughs> yes, Cody, let's go. <gasps> Please don't. You can't. I'm a soldier like you. No, 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 no. This is what I was bred for. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. No, no, no. Okay. Fuck's sake. Oh my god, 99. We lost a true soldier. I'm so sad. He really was one of us. <sighs> of course he was. If you watched my season one and two recap and review video, you will know that I love the Domino Squad part one and two arcs. So naturally, I figured that I would probably enjoy Domino Squad part three. And yes, I did. This one was 100% my favorite out of the three. I really loved seeing Fives and Echo get their arc trooper promotion. I thought that was lovely. It was just so great to have another super clone focused episode with this big battle going on. And we also have to make an honorable rest in peace mention to 99. I know I said that this is my favorite of the three and Rookies is already in the A slot, but unfortunately this episode just wasn't quite S tier for me. So it is, we could consider it tied with Rookies, but trust me when I say that I enjoyed it more than Rookies. Following Arc Troopers, we have yet another single episode arc in this season called Sphere of Influence, and in this episode and arc, the chairman of Pantora's daughters are kidnapped and held for ransom. Ahsoka teams up with Ryo Chuchi, the senator of Pantora, to help the chairman get his daughters back before the Trade Federation can influence the future of the planet. Greedo is the first kidnapper, he is tracked and one of the daughters is rescued and the other daughter is held captive on a Trade Federation battleship and Officer Sib Kine is ousted as a separatist conspirator. I really appreciated the political vibes of this episode and the variety of species that we had in this episode and also the variety of locations, but I will admit that overall this was kind of a meh episode for me. I considered it very much on the weak side and for me it just wasn't super memorable. That being said, I I did love that we got to see Greedo in this episode. I was never expecting to see Greedo after A New Hope at all, and seeing him was a welcomed surprise. No questions about this one. This episode is unfortunately a D for me. All right, the next arc in season three of The Clone Wars is the Zero Trilogy, and it kicks off with the episode called Evil Plans. In this episode, C-3PO is captured by Cad Bane, who is looking for information about the Senate building for Jabba the Hutt so that he can go rescue Zero from being imprisoned. Since 3PO doesn't have the information required, they end up kidnapping R2-D2 as well. And once they get their info, they wipe the droids' minds of the incident and let them go. All right, I was never expecting an episode with my two boys, 3PO and R2, so naturally, I really enjoyed this episode. <laughs> 
The droids just have such a super special place in my heart that having an episode with those two as like our main characters and everything that went down just was really, really fun. Even though I just said that, I wouldn't necessarily rank this episode super high on the list just relative to anything else that I've seen so far, but I did really enjoy this one and it also had me really excited for what was to come in the rest of the arc. So Evil Plans is being rated a C on my list. The second episode in this arc actually does not take place in season three. We actually have to travel all the way back to season one to watch the episode called Hostage Crisis. And in this episode, we watch bounty hunters seize control of the Senate building to take hostages while being completely unaware that Anakin is actually there and hanging around. So I definitely preferred this episode over the first one, but it boggles my mind that this episode was the season one finale when it takes place in the middle of the story. It made me very happy that I elected to watch this in the official chronological order instead of just the way that it appears on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> A favorite thing about this episode for me was having to watch Anakin manage without having his lightsaber, and it was just really cool to see Anakin get creative when, you know, you don't have your lightsaber, which can basically make you invincible. <laughs> I know that I said that I like this episode more than Evil Plans, but my level of enjoyment in the C bracket is quite large, so this one is also being rated a C. All right, to wrap up this trilogy, we watch the episode called Hunt for Zero, and we see Cad Bane breaking Zero out of prison, and the Hut Council then demands Zero to tell them where he's hidden the journal that details the crimes of the five Hut families. Zero makes an escape with his lover, Sai Snoodles, and Bane chases after them, but so does Obi-Wan Kenobi and the Jedi Quinlan Voss. They end up encountering Zero's mother, who sends them over to Teth, and here Zero has hidden the journal at the grave of his father. When he gets the journal though, Snooty reveals her true intentions. She was a bounty hunter for hire. She kills Zero and returns the journal to Jabba the Hutt. This was definitely the highlight of the trilogy for me, and I kind of want to put that all on Quinlan Voss. Uh, at the time of watching this episode, I had already watched Obi-Wan Kenobi, I think in its entirety, which means that I knew of Quinlan's name because it was mentioned in that show. So it was really cool to finally get to meet Quinlan, see what he looks like, see how he talks and how he acts and just how he fights and everything, and it was really cool to see that. I will say that this trilogy overall is not high on my list, but I would place this episode higher than the other two. So for that, Hunt for Zero is in the B category for me. The next arc in season three is another trilogy called the Senate Trilogy, which kicks off with the episode called Heroes on Both Sides. In this episode, Padme and Ahsoka travel in secret to the capital of the Confederacy of Independent Systems, while the Senate debates a bill that would eliminate government oversight of the banking clan's activities in order to fund the war. Padme tries to forge a peace agreement with the Separatists, while Ahsoka seeks the people of the Confederacy for the first time. Mina Bonteri, Padme's friend, leads the initiative and convinces the Separatist Congress to sue for peace. Back on Coruscant, Grievous, under Dooku's command, begins an attack at the central power distribution grid carried out by demo droids. The panic gets to the Senate, who rejects the peace initiative and deregulates the banking clan instead. As someone who had a very long career in finance, this episode completely spoke to me because there was so much talk about loans and interest rates and deregulation, and I loved that. I also just really enjoyed the huge amount of politics in this episode, and it kind of told me that this whole trilogy was probably going to be very political, so I was very ready for that. The best part of this episode by far was Ahsoka realizing that just because someone is a separatist doesn't mean that they're automatically a bad person, and she kind of realized that separatists are just like people in the Republic in a way, and they just happen to side with the separatists. Not everyone on the separatist side is bad, just like not everyone in the Republic is good. This episode I am definitely throwing into the B category, if I can place that properly. There we go. Yeah. Definitely a B episode for me. Enjoyed it a lot. Continuing in this trilogy, we watch the episode called Pursuit of Peace, and in this episode, Padme, Bail Organa, and Anaconda Far try to rally senators to oppose a bill that would give funds for millions of new clone troops, resulting in horrific financial consequences for the Republic. Opposition to this quickly makes them targets, though. They end up escaping two hired thugs, and Padme is then able to sway the Senate by recalling how the war has affected a regular civilian. 
her handmaiden, Tekla Minow. The highlight in this episode for me was 100% Padme's speech at the end. Chef's kiss, amazing. Padme, you legend, I love you. I just think she's so good with people and civilians and I'm glad that people were very receptive to her and the speech that she made. This trilogy just had me so happy that we were really deep diving into the political stuff because I am someone that enjoys that. To me, it's a really nice break from all of the fighting and battles in Star Wars. I like when things get political. It just allows for really good conversations, really good dialogue, and just really interesting situations to occur. This episode, I would also firmly rate a B. All right, wrapping up this trilogy, we have the episode titled Senate Murders. And in this episode, Senator Anna Kondafar dies under suspicious circumstances and Padme sets out on a mission to find the person responsible for the death of him. Halt, put down your weapon. Nice. <laughs> oh my God, Padme. Well, so CSI was a huge love of mine growing up, so this episode was an immediate win for me. Honestly, any sort of death investigation in the Clone Wars gets me really amped and excited, but this episode was really good. And naturally, the highlight of this episode was Padme knocking the blaster out of Lolo's hand and then just straight up giving her a punch. <laughs> I don't condone physical violence, but when it's deserved and when it's delivered by someone that you just love so much who normally wouldn't do something like that, oh my god, it is so satisfying. I love it. This episode is also being put into the B slot. Uh, this whole trilogy for me, I felt pretty much the same about every single episode. Love the politics, love the story. Every episode was good, but not like amazing to be put in the A or S slot. Just very firm B, a very enjoyable B trilogy. All right, the next arc in season three is the Night Sisters trilogy, and oh my gosh, this trilogy was so unexpected for me because it gets very fantasy and magical and just a direction that I was not expecting in the Star Wars universe. The first episode is called Night Sisters, and in this one, Dooku attempts to assassinate Ventress, his apprentice. He received a command from Darth Sidious to do it. However, Ventress survives the attempt, and she vows to take revenge with the help of her Night Sisters. Mother Talzin, the leader, gives Ventress and the other Night Sisters a cloak of invisibility, and they infiltrate Dooku's palace. They don't kill him, but since they were using stolen Jedi lightsabers, Dooku assumes that the Jedi tried to kill him. He now wants protection in the form of a new apprentice, and he reaches out to Mother Talzin to ask for one. This episode felt like one of the fastest episodes in the entire show for me so far. It literally felt 10 minutes long, and I wanted more. I absolutely loved it, and this episode in particular just immediately felt for me like things were so cranked up compared to what I had seen in the show so far. We had the betrayal of Ventress by Dooku, we had the introduction of Mother other Talzin and the Night Sisters on Dathomir, and I finished this episode just immediately wanting to dive into the next one and watch more, which I did. This episode for me is a very, very easy A rating, no questions. The second episode in this trilogy is called Monster, and with Count Dooku out seeking a new apprentice, Ventress and the other Night Sisters use this opportunity to get their revenge on his betrayal. Ventress takes a visit to the far side of Dathomir to the males of the planet to seek the most powerful warrior. Talzin gets Ventress to select Savage Opress. Using dark magic, Talzin transforms Savage into a huge warrior who is loyal to Ventress and Ventress only. She then delivers Savage to Dooku to serve as his secret Sith apprentice to overthrow throw Darth Sidious. This episode was so enjoyable for me because I loved getting to meet and see the men of Dathomir. And then naturally I got to realize that this was like the birthplace and creation of Darth Maul, who if you guys watched my Phantom Menace reaction will know that I find Darth Maul very attractive and hot. <laughs> I just loved seeing Ventress engage with the men of Dathomir so, so much. And the creation of Savage into Dooku's apprentice was just so good. Once again, this episode, an A, and you'll probably guess what I rank the next episode too. The finale of this trilogy is called Witches of the Mist, and in this episode there have been lots of Jedi deaths and Anakin and Obi-Wan are sent to track who is responsible, which leads them on the trail of Savage Opress who is now trained by Dooku in the ways of the Sith. Dooku sends Savage to Toydaria to capture King Katunko, who ends up being killed when the Jedi interfere. Savage returns to Dooku after the failure, and it is here that Ventress strikes with Savage at her side against Dooku. Now, Dooku wins, Ventress flees, and Savage returns to Mother Talzin after dropping his loyalties to Dooku and the Sith, and she sends him on a new mission, which is to seek out his long-lost brother. So with this episode wrapping up this trilogy, it just confirms 
confirmed for me that this trilogy is one of the best in the show so far, in my humble opinion. There's witches, there's dark magic, and just the whole fantasy aspect to this area of the Star Wars universe just completely has me in a chokehold, and I love, love, love it so much. I just felt like I needed more, and I wanted more, and that was all I could focus on when this trilogy was over. A friend of mine had also sent me a meme shortly before I watched this trilogy, which I didn't see, but I immediately looked it up after the fact and I will put it here for you to look at and laugh at because I 1000% agree with this meme. <laughs> This episode is going to join the other two in the A slot. Yep, yeah, this whole trilogy was an A plus for me. And next up, we have the Mortis trilogy, another three episode arc kicking off with an episode called Overlords. A mysterious force takes Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka to a distant planet housing a family of exceptionally powerful force wielders who want to determine if Anakin is truly the chosen one. The father is the patriarch of this family who has spent years keeping the balance between his daughter, who is strong with the light side, and his son, who aligns with the dark. Father reveals that his days are numbered and he really wants Anakin to take his place to maintain this balance in the force. A test proves that Anakin is fully capable of controlling both the daughter and the son, but Anakin refuses to take the father's place. Obi-Wan, have you done this in the last? Have you drained the boy? Master Qui-Gon, oh how are you here? I am here because you are here. The music right now is so good. It's very like Duel of the Fate Sea, but obviously not. Okay, so the first thing I have to say about this episode is hearing Liam Neeson come back super briefly as Qui-Gon just for a moment to voice a couple lines was absolutely awesome and fantastic, and I just loved that. This episode was completely unexpected for me, and it really, really surprised me. I really enjoyed this one. A top scene for me in this entire show occurred in this episode, and it was the scene where Anakin was controlling over both the daughter and the son. I thought that that was an absolutely S-tier scene. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I think that this episode is the best kickoff episode to any of the arcs that we've seen so far in the show. Unique characters, a unique location, I wasn't really expecting any of this to happen and I could not wait to get to the next two episodes in this trilogy. This episode is once again an A, joining the episodes before it. The second episode in this trilogy is called Altar of Mortis, and in this episode, the son captures Ahsoka to try and get Anakin to join him to overpower the father and daughter. To do so, the son casts Ahsoka under the spell of the dark side. Now the father attempts to stave off a showdown between his children and maintain the balance of the force, but the daughter feels that the son may be unstoppable, so she takes Obi-Wan Kenobi to the Altar of Mortis, where the dagger of Mortis is kept. This is a weapon that is capable of killing a force wielder. However, the son ends up stealing this weapon and tries to use it against the father to steal his power and end his rule. Both unfortunately and fortunately, the daughter puts herself in front of the blade to protect her father, ultimately sacrificing herself. <coughs> hey, Snips. Once again, this was an episode that just had me so invested and so fascinated, and I was sitting here just having a great old time. When Ahsoka came out from under the dark side spell and kind of came to, I absolutely thrived on the hug between her and Anakin. I think the sacrifice by the daughter was sad and emotional, but it was needed at that point, so big ups to her. Watching this trilogy, I was just so invested in this family and these characters, and I just was completely enjoying myself. It was so good. As a result, this episode is also an A episode for me. To conclude this trilogy, we have the episode called Ghosts of Mortis, and this is where the son tries once again to convert Anakin, who is now stunned by images of his dark future that he can now see. The son promises him the power to not have this occur. The father recognizes that the son has broken the rules of time, so the father wipes Anakin's brain of these future visions and steals the dagger of Mortis. The father impales himself, which prevents the son from stealing his power. The son is shocked by this, and Anakin kills him with his lightsaber. As the father is passing away, he proclaims Anakin as the chosen one since he brought balance back to Mortis. The father gives him a warning that he needs to beware his inner self and pay attention to his heart, or else he will bring doom to the galaxy. After this, Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka are transplanted back into the galaxy at the exact moment that they first disappeared, without any time having gone by at all. Please. 
You were my brother, Anakin! Powerful Sith, you will be. I hate you! Oh my god! No! 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 Yo. Honestly, this whole trilogy blew my mind, and this trilogy became my favorite up to this point out of all the arcs that I had seen so far. I felt that this was such a unique arc with unique characters and kind of setting things up too in a way. I found it really interesting that Anakin had those accurate visions of his future but then had them wiped as to not affect anything. This episode for me is going all the way up to the S tier. It was so good. All right, the second last arc of season three is another trilogy called the Citadel Trilogy, and it kicks off with an episode called the Citadel. In this episode, Obi-Wan and Anakin are leading a team of troopers and Jedi to attempt to free Jedi General Evan Peel from a prison. Despite being ordered not to come along, Ahsoka Tano does go along anyway, lying that she was sent to join them by Master Plo Koon. Peel and his fleet officer, Captain Tarkin, are freed from their cells, but now they have to escape the Citadel itself. General. Captain Tarkin. <gasps> I never thought I'd see you again. And you brought friends. Did not Tarkin, recognize him? this is Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker. Oh my god. I deserve my trust for those who take action, General Skywalker. Then let me remind you, we rescued you back there. And I reserve my trust for those who understand gratitude, Captain Tarkin. Ooh. Ooh. I love it. <laughs> The highlights in this episode for me was literally every single conversation between Anakin and Tarkin because I was not expecting Tarkin to actually be in the Clone Wars TV show at all. And then he shows up and just seeing him and Anakin together pre-Vader is just, ugh, it was really interesting for me. <laughs> I also have to give huge props to the voice actor for Tarkin because I felt that he sounded exactly like Peter Cushing and I just love that so many voice actors in the show sound just like their film counterparts. By the end of this episode, I really liked Peel and I was really excited to learn more about him. This was an enjoyable episode for me. It is going in the B slot. My my B my B ratings are like episodes that I like enjoy, you know, just well, I mean, it's really hard for me to describe the differences between these tiers, but hopefully y'all get it by now. <laughs> Once again, I enjoy everything, just some more than others. That's all. All right, moving on to the second episode called Counter Attack. In this episode, Obi-Wan and Anakin are searching for an escape out of the Citadel, but the prison has a lot more blocks than they expected. Heavy weapons end up destroying their escape craft, and sadly, Echo dies in the blast. Rest in peace, Echo, we love you. They flee to the caves, and they call for rescue from the Jedi Temple. Once again, the conversations between Anakin and Tarkin were the absolute highlights for me in this episode. I just love seeing them interact at this stage of the timeline. I also feel like the Citadel itself just really fascinates me. I love its structure. I love its design. It just seems like a very cool prison. <laughs> Counterattack is another B episode for me. And to wrap up this arc, we have Citadel Rescue. And in this episode, Anakin and Obi-Wan are leading the escaped prisoners to an area where they can be picked up by the cruisers and fighters that were sent to rescue them by Plo Koon. Evan Peel is ravaged by Anuba tracking beasts, unfortunately, but before he passes away, he gives the Nexus Roots coordinates to Ahsoka. When the survivors return to Coruscant, Ahsoka knows the required half of the intel, but won't share it to anyone but the Jedi Council. Whereas Tarkin, who contains the other half, won't share it to anyone but Chancellor Palpatine. Surprise, surprise. Even though I don't like Tarkin as a person, this arc provided some awesome insight into him before he becomes, you know, the Tarkin that we see in the films. I still love the conversations between him and Anakin in this last episode as well. I just was giddy with like, oh my God, during all of those moments. The death of Peel hit me pretty hard emotionally, which is kind of unexpected, but I feel like you can always count on Star Wars to make you super invested in characters that you only get like an hour with. Honestly, this whole arc was super enjoyable for me. This episode is also going to go into the B slot for me. This arc was enjoyable. Every episode was good. I don't think there was any episode that I liked more than any others. So they're all gonna go in the B slot. 
And concluding season three of The Clone Wars, we have a duology called Hunted. The first episode in this one is called Padawan Lost. And in this episode, Ahsoka and a group of abducted younglings find themselves trapped on a Trandoshan moon, and they are now prey and being hunted. The younglings have lost all hope, but Ahsoka rallies them and lifts their spirits to defend themselves and strike back against the Trandoshan. Once again, you can always count on Star Wars to introduce characters that you only get a very short time with, but you care about them and you're sad when they're gone, and that was Khalifa for me. I really enjoyed this episode. I love the planet moon that we were on. I thought that it was super lush and dense and beautiful, and just seeing them hop and swing through the trees was just excellent. Ahsoka rallying the younglings and like getting their hopes up and kind of being a leader was really interesting and really, really important and good for her development. And I just really loved seeing her in that kind of position. Not gonna lie, this episode is definitely an A for me. I, now that I'm sitting here recalling it and just remembering what happened, I'm like, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. And the finale of this arc and the season overall is the episode called Wookiee Hunt. And this continues the story of the last episode, obviously, with Ahsoka and the younglings struggling to evade the Trandoshan hunters. They get a boost from an unexpected ally. A captive Chewbacca appears. Chewie gathers parts from a wrecked slave ship and assembles a communicator so that they can send out a distress signal. Help arrives from General Tarful and his group of Wookiee warriors, and once free, Ahsoka returns to the Jedi Temple. What was that? A survivor. It could be one of the prisoners they were dropping off. Wait a second. Is this what Chew is, that? is this Chewbacca? Mm. Oh my god. It's a Wookiee. That's Chewy. That is 1000% Chewy. And is that Chewy right behind them the whole time, too? Ugh, it's so crazy. Oh, Yoda, yeah. It's so crazy to me that Anakin and Chewy were like that close, but they didn't meet because they can't meet, right? I really appreciated the Ahsoka focus in this arc and just seeing her develop and evolve and just become a really awesome leader. I love seeing her on her own where we don't have Anakin, we don't have Obi-Wan, she's truly just on her own. I know she's still a Padawan, but it's really great seeing her in these leader roles. I feel like this episode and arc just really highlighted how far she's come since season one and that's why I love it so much because I love Ahsoka and I just, yeah. This arc was great. Naturally, Chewie and Tarful making appearances in this episode was wonderful. Such a welcome surprise. Chewie's appearance just had me shocked and so excited. So yeah, this episode is also an A rating for me. Very, very easy A arc. All right, so that covers my thoughts on the arcs that make up season three of The Clone Wars. As always, please leave your comments down below. I would love to know what your favorite episodes in this season were. Was there any arc that stands out for you more than others? Are you also like me and super invested in the Night Sisters and the Night Brothers and Dathomir and like that whole area of Star Wars? Cause oh my gosh, I hope that there are more of you out there. <laughs> Once again, I really appreciate you all taking the time to watch this video. My thoughts on season four will be coming out soon. So please subscribe if you're not already so that you will get notified when that video comes out. I am very excited to cover season four and the later seasons as well. And if you wanna continue on watching, one of my reaction videos. One will pop up right here for you. If it interests you, feel free to click and check it out. We will see you in the next video. Thank you so much again and have a great rest of your day. Take care, everyone.